What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. We are starting to get all the information we wanted all this time about phase two of season of discovery. Wowhead has started data mining all the new runes for each and every class. All right, so let's take a look at some of these druid runes. We're going to start off with the belt runes. We have Engrave Belt Berserk. When activated, this ability causes your mangle ability to hit up to three targets and have no cooldown and reduces the energy cost of all your cat form abilities by 50% and lasts 15 seconds. Requires bear form, cat form, or dire bear form to activate. Clears the effect of fear and makes you immune to fear for the duration. So... Feral Druids getting Berserk, that's going to feel really nice in Classic. Um, Berserk is it, 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 just, Berserk alone just makes feral, playing Feral Druid feel so much better. It's giving, now you're getting, uh, Bear Druids are getting like an actual strong cleave um, and cat form. Having 50% energy reduction on all of your abilities while this is active for 15 seconds is massive. You mix that with the new automatic Crowd Pummeler mace that you're going to be getting in Gnomer and Druids are going to... They're going to be pumping, in my opinion. So moving down from there, we have Engrave Belt Eclipse. This is for our Boomkins out there. Everyone pay attention because they need to be stronger, Boomkins. Starfire increases the critical strike chance of your next two Wraths by 30%, and Wrath increases the critical strike chance of your next Starfire by 30%. Both effects stack up to four charges. Both spells also gain 70% chance at all times to not lose casting when you take damage so boomkins getting eclipse is just nutty i think that's going to be absolutely awesome and you know what i think it's it's a welcome addition i think they definitely needed eclipse um i actually put this in my rune video i don't know if you guys saw it when i was like kind of theory crafting what runes each class should get i did put eclipse in there and i think i think it's just going to fit really well uh with this version of druid and then our last belt rune is a resto druid one we have nourish uh, basically a nice heal. We have heals a friendly target for X amount. Heals for an additional 20% if you have a rejuve, regrowth, life bloom, or wild growth effect active on the target. This spell benefits from and triggers all effects associated with healing touch. So that's nice for our resto druids. There's no... I mean, it's pretty simple. Pretty straightforward for druids. Like if you're feral, you're taking berserk. If you're boomkin, you're taking eclipse. If you're resto, you're taking nourish. No choices really to make there. Um... And moving on down to our boot runes, uh, for our first one, we have Dream State. Your damaging spell critical strikes grant you 50% of your mana regeneration while casting for 8 seconds and increase nature damage dealt to the target by 20%. So that's obviously for our Boomkins. Dream State sounds like it's going to be really good. Um, you're going to get some mana back and deal increased damage from this. So that's pretty strong. And then our second boot rune is it looks like it's going to be for our feral druids. We have King of the Jungle. Tiger's Fury now increases all physical damage you deal by 15% instead of by a flat value and instantly grants you 60 energy. It is no longer on the global cooldown, but it now has its own 30 second cooldown. So this to me is really nice um, because Tiger's Fury is at, like it is just a horrible ability and it feels so bad to ever use it if anyone here has actually ever played feral druid it feels awful to use tiger's fury in this version of wow um so adding king of the jungle in here and, and basically ch completely changing how it works was absolutely necessary because it was it was terrible um and our last boot rune we have survival instincts this is for our tanks when activated this grants you 30 percent of your maximum health for 20 seconds after the effect expires the health is lost usable in any form in addition you regenerate five rage every time you dodge while in bear form or dire bear form 10 energy while in cat form or one percent of your maximum mana while in any other form so you don't need to be in bear form to use this it's usable in any form it's basically like a defensive uh self-sustain cooldown type of ability uh so this is really really a nice uh, addition to their kit as well moving on down to our bracer runes we have engraved bracers efflorescence your Swift Men now also causes efflorescence, healing all party members within 15 yards of the Swift Men target's location for X amount every two seconds for 30 seconds. So this is just piling on more AoE healing to Druids. Their, their raid healing at this point with these runes coming is going to just be 
out of this world. Like they're going to be so incredibly strong at healing that it's not even funny. So our next Bracer Room, moving on. We have Improved Frenzied Regeneration. Your Frenzied Regeneration can now be used in all forms or while not shapeshifted. It now converts your active resource into health every second for 10 seconds. Up to 10 rage, 10 energy, or 5 base mana is converted per second into up to 10% health. So a nice, another self-sustain healing uh, rune here. And then moving on down to our Helm runes. Our first one is Engrave Helm Gale Winds. Increase the damage done by your Hurricane by 100%. It no longer has a cooldown and its mana cost is reduced by 20%. That is massive. Our Boomkins are really going to be absolutely pumping, especially on AoE if they use this rune. And then we have Engrave Helm Gore. Striking a target with Lacerate, Swipe, or Maul has a 15% chance to reset the cooldown on Mangle. Striking a target with Mangle or Shred has a 5% chance to reset the cooldown on Tiger's Fury. So this is going to make for some really fun gameplay because if we read what happens with Tiger's Fury with King of the Jungle, um, it grants you 60 energy and has a 15% damage and has a 30 second cooldown. So you combine that with Gore, now you're spamming Mangle or Shred in cat form. Uh, you have a 5% chance every single time to get a free Tiger's Fury, basically. Um, that's going to grant you 60 energy instantly and give you a 15% damage buff. So that's going to be pretty cool and pretty strong. Um, and then our last Helm Rune we have, Engrave Helm Improved Barkskin. Your Barkskin can now be cast on allies, no longer penalizes melee combat speed or spellcasting timing can be cast while shapeshifted. Wow, that is amazing. That's going to make Barkskin really, really strong, uh, especially in PvP or for tanks. Even if it's a druid healer, they can use that because um, they're not going to... I mean, they could pick up Gale Winds as well, but I'm assuming Improved Barkskin is what you're going to pick up as a healer to be able to throw it on your tanks or anyone that you need to. But uh, yeah, these Druid runes, I think they knocked it out of the park. Druids got some really, really good stuff, um, and I think they're going to be in a great spot moving forward into Phase 2. But I'd like to know what you guys think. Drop some comments down below. Let's get into some conversations. All right, guys, so here are the warrior runes that we're getting. We're going to start off with, it looks like, our belt runes. Uh, we have Engrave Belt Blood Surge. Uh, and what this does is Heroic Strike, Bloodthirst, and Whirlwind have a 30% chance to make your next slam within 15 seconds instant and cost no rage. That looks pretty good. Blood Surge uh, was put in the game at a later point, and it was a very uh, well-liked ability. I actually think it was a talent. Um, and uh, I remember using Blood Surge a lot. It makes, you know, using Slam not feel absolutely horrible. So that's a pretty good one. We have Engrave Belt Focused Rage. Reduces the rage cost of your offensive abilities by three. Um, this is kind of cool, but I'm not really sure how rage starved you're going to be. I mean, even at level 25, once I got full Biss on my Warrior, I am pretty much never rage. So I actually have a problem um, dumping all of my rage at this point. Um, so I'm not really sure if we're going to be using that one. And then we have Engrave Belt Precise Timing. Slam is now instant, but has a six second cooldown. So obviously here, uh, what most people are going to be using is going to be Blood Surge. Um, I feel like that's going to be weaved into uh, both different specs, to be completely honest, Arms or Fury. Um, and it's going to be the go-to, in my opinion. I'm sure we'll find some use cases for the other two, but Blood Surge is pretty big there. And then we have the Boot Runes. So, we have Engrave Boots Enraged Regeneration. Heals you for 30% of your maximum health over 10 seconds, but can only be used while Enraged, Berserker Rage, or Blood Rage is active. Usable while stunned. So, we did get one thing. I was complaining for a while there, saying that, like, Warriors needed something you know, to help them in PvP, right? I think Warriors really are lacking some kind of self-sustain in PvP. You know, as it stands right now, and in Vanilla, even with full Biss, um, Warriors really have a hard time and really struggle with staying alive and, and 1v1ing in PvP. If you have a Priest or a Paladin following a Warrior around, supporting them, or even a Druid, it's a different story. But when it comes to one-on-one -on -one situations, Warrior is, was, you know, it just never could stack up to most of the other classes. So it's good to see them get a, um, a heal, some sort of self-sustaining ability here. We have Engrave Boots Intervene. 
run at high speed towards a party member, intercepting the next melee attack or ranged attack made against them, as well as reducing their total threat by 10%. We all know and love Intervene. I think that's great. It's a nice defensive charge type ability. Uh, we have Rallying Cry in Grave Boots Rallying Cry. Let loose a Rallying Cry, granting all party and raid members within 40 yards 15% increased maximum health for 10 seconds. Uh, so we got Rallying Cry. Everybody knows and loves Rallying Cry. And it looks like Commanding Shout was in here too. Um, but that's going to be a Pant Rune. Uh, so that's going to be Warrior Shouts increasing stamina of all party members within 30 yards by 2. Uh, maybe this is one that was like in and they kind of took it out because it's kind of thrown in the mix here with the boots and the bracer runes. Um, so I think Rallying Cry is the actual one that's going to be in the game and Commanding Shout might have... It might be in the game. I mean, it's a different rune slot, but it might... Uh, I don't know if it's going to be used if Rallying Cry is also an option. And then let's move on down to the bracer runes. So we have Engrave Bracer's Rampage. Warrior goes on a rampage, increasing attack power by 2% and causing most successful melee attacks to increase attack power by an additional 2%. This effect will stack up to five times. Last 30 seconds, this ability can only be used after scoring a critical hit. Um, I can tell you right now, before even reading the other two, that this one is going to be the go-to Bracer Rune for DPS Warriors, that's for sure. That's a lot of attack power. Um, that's actually crazy. That Rampage is, is pretty nutty. Um, and then we have Engrave Bracer's Sword and Board. When your Devastate and Revenge abilities deal damage, they have a 30% chance of refreshing the cooldown of your Shield Slam ability and reducing its Rage cost by 100%. That is really nice. Uh, sword and Board feels really good. It makes tanking feel really good. Uh, I remember when they added Sword and Board, and I'm, not, I, I'm pretty sure it was almost identical to this, if not maybe a little bit different. But um, being able to spam Devastate and Revenge when it activates, um, and that reducing the cooldown of your shield slam and making you be able to just blast that with no rage cost it felt good tanking it felt like you had a lot of buttons to press so it, it was really good so i think that's a nice tanking rune right there um and then we have engrave bracers wrecking crew engrave your bracers with wrecking crew your melee critical hits enrage you increasing all physical damage caused by 10 percent for 12 seconds this effect does not stack with Enrage. That's another nice one since it's on your Bracers, but again, you're going to be competing with Rampage for that. So I think Rampage is, is going to just always pretty much outscale Wrecking Crew, but we'll have to wait and see. Maybe Wrecking Crew would be more uh, PvP focused in my opinion, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Uh, we have some Helm Runes. Engrave Helm Shield Mastery increases all physical damage you deal by 10%. While you have a shield equipped and reduces the duration of all disarm effects against you by 50%. This effect does not stack with uh, other disarm duration reducing effects. Uh, so what I'm getting out of this, right? Between sword and board and shield mastery, we basically have like a gladiator stance. Um, basically split into two runes. So like PvP warriors, if you take sword and board and shield mastery and uh, what was it up here? Enraged regeneration and you PvP with a one-hander and a shield, you're doing increased damage uh, by 10% from the shield mastery rune, um, reducing the amount that you can be disarmed, which is really nice. Uh, and you're, you know, I, I feel like it's going to be really cool because you're going to be able to be spamming devastate on someone, revenge, and then shield slamming with no rage cost. You're going to be super tanky uh, because you have a shield on. Um, so I, I feel like we're going to see some really cool warrior PvP builds coming. And obviously that's amazing for tanking as well. Um, and then we have Engrave Helm Taste for Blood. Whenever your Rend ability causes damage, your Overpower ability will activate for 9 seconds or 1 attack. This effect will not occur more than once every 6 seconds. So basically using Rend is going to proc Overpower. You're not going to need to rely on dodges anymore for that. So... Uh, for DPS, that looks like that's going to be the go-to rune. But let's take a look at the next one. We have Engrave Helm Vigilance. So we have focus your protective gaze on a party or raid member, reducing their damage taken by 3% and transferring 10% of the threat they cause to you. In addition, each time they are hit by an attack, your taunt cooldown is refreshed. Last 30 minutes. Okay, so basically like, like a defensive like taunt to reduce the threat um, and damage taken by one of your party or raid members. Another nice tanking one right there. So for DPS, you're obviously going to be using Taste for Blood here. You're going to be using Rampage. Um, we're going to be using, I mean, the only pants, uh, the only boots ones that we got 
um, for DPS. None of them are really for DPS, so it looks like Rallying Cry would most likely be the rune you take for your boots uh, in a DPS warrior setting. And then for your belt, obviously Blood Surge is going to be what you take there. Um, pretty cool. De definitely some stuff that's interesting. Uh, they're definitely going to be pretty strong. I would really have liked to see them like kind of change up how the class is played a little bit. Like maybe give them like Colossus or, you know, I'm not saying give them Titan's Grip, but something similar. Something that like, you know, how Warlocks got Metamorphosis, right? It's such a massive change. Like these are all really cool things, but most of them are, you know, abilities from other versions of WoW. Um, there's nothing that's going to, like, change what playing Warrior, like, really feels like, which is a little upsetting because it is my favorite class. But nonetheless, these are some pretty cool runes, um, and I'm happy with it. I want to know what you guys think, so drop some comments down below for sure. Time to take a look at the Warlock runes, one of my favorite classes. I'm pretty excited. All right, so let's look at the uh, belt engravings first, the belt runes, and we're going to start off with Grimoire of Synergy. Recite from a dark tome, granting damage done by you or your summoned demon a 5% chance to increase the damage done by the other by 5% for 15 seconds. Granting damage done by you or your summoned demon a 5% chance to increase the damage done by the other. Oh, okay, so it kind of plays off you and your demon. Um, basically, a 5% damage increase. That's pretty nice. Um, and then we have another belt rune here, Invocation. Refreshing Corruption, Immolate, Curse of Agony, or Siphon Life, when it has less than six seconds remaining, will cause you to deal instant damage to the target equal to one period of that spell's periodic damage. Um, I guess this could be cool in certain situations if we're going to be able to play like Affliction going forward. I could see that being used in some builds. Um, and then we have Engrave Belt, Shadow, and Flame. Your critical strikes with fire and shadow spells. Increase your fire and shatter fire and shadow damage by 10 percent that's going to be huge that's going to be pretty big so i'm assuming that that is going to be that's most likely going to be the rune you're taking for like uh just straight up 10 percent for 10 seconds every time you crit with fire and shadow spells um yeah that's huge so moving down to the boot runes we have Dance of the Wicked. You and your demon pet gain dodge chance equal to your spell critical strike chance each time you deal a critical strike to an enemy. And also both regain 2% of your maximum mana. So a tanking rune right here uh, for your meta locks. We have Demonic Knowledge on your boots as well. This is another boot rune. Increase your spell damage and healing by a value equal to 10% of your demon pet's total stamina plus intellect. Okay, so we Demonic Knowledge, they're, they're pretty much just taking that straight from Wrath. Um, and then we have Engrave Boots, Shadow Flame, Target in a cone in front of you, in front of the caster for X amount of shadow damage. Um, and an additional X amount of fire damage over eight seconds. This effect can be consumed with Conflagrate. Um, so basically like a cone of cold for mages. Uh, however, this is going to be shadow and fire damage. And then moving on down to our Bracer runes, we have, and I called this in my video, I knew this was going to come in. This is going to make Warlock tanking pretty sick. Um, we have Immolation Aura on the Bracers. Burns nearby enemies for X amount of damage every two seconds and reduces all magic damage taken by 10%. Lasts until cancelled. So that is really cool. Um, Immolation Aura is going to be awesome. I hope it actually has like a cool animation, like green fire. If you can imagine these like meta locks, like charging into a pack of mobs, green fire all around them, it, it's going to be pretty cool. Um, another Bracer rune here, Summon Felguard. I, I feel like I, I saw this coming as well. Summons a Felguard under the command of the Warlock. The Felguard benefits from all talents and effects that trigger from or benefit any of your other demon minions. Um, another Bracer one here, Unstable Affliction. Shadow energy slowly destroys the target, causing X amount of damage over 15 seconds. In addition, if the unstable affliction is dispelled, it will cause X amount of damage to the dispeller and silence them for 5 seconds. Only one unstable affliction or immolate per warlock can be active on any one target. So, unstable affliction there. Maybe we're going to be able to play some uh, affliction warlocks in phase 2. Who knows, huh? And then we have our two Helm runes. We have Backdraft. Your Conflagrate ability also grants 30% spell casting haste for 10 seconds. And then we have Engrave Helm Pandemic. Oh, man. Pandemic. 
Periodic damage from your corruption, unstable affliction, curse of agony, immolate, curse of doom, and siphon life abilities can now be critical strikes. So yeah, so affliction warlocks, maybe we'll maybe we'll see some affliction warlock action going on. I don't know if it'll out DPS destruction. But Pandemic, yeah. Having your dots be able to crit. Like, Affliction Warlock in Wrath of the Lich King is, like, one of my favorite versions of Warlock, like, ever. Like, it feels so good to play in ICC. Um, I'm so happy that they just got Pandemic here. This is, like, really exciting. Um, I hope that Affliction Warlocks can be played. But, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think of these runes. I think... Warlock's got some really good stuff as well. Like, Mage still has, in my opinion, got the best runes. Uh, but Warlock has got some really good stuff here, right? Like, I mean, Shadow and Flame, this is huge. That's a 10% damage boost. We have uh, Demonic Knowledge. That's another massive boost that you're gonna, that's gonna, you're gonna be on your boots. Um, we have Immolation Aura for your Bracers for tanking, which is really cool. Felguard in Vanilla, like what? That's gonna be awesome. And then Unstable Affliction, Pandemic, like, I don't know, I feel like Warlocks are going to be in a really, really good spot going into Phase 2. Um, but that's just my opinion, and I might be a little biased because it's one of my favorite classes. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Alright guys, so let's take a look at some of these Shaman runes. We're going to start off with the Belt runes. We have Engrave Belt Fire Nova. Your Fire Nova Totem spell is replaced with Fire Nova which causes your current fire totem to emit damage at its location. So basically any fire totem that you have down, if no one knows how this works, um, it'll basically turn your fire nova totem into a spell. And you, let's say you throw a fire totem down, or now you're going to be able to project them into a group of mobs and you're going to hit fire nova and it's going to just burst out flames from wherever your fire totem is. This is a really, really nice AOE ability. So I feel like shamans are going to really start pumping when it comes uh, to AOE. Uh, with this ability in particular. And then on our belt, we have another rune, a uh, Maelstrom Weapon. When you deal damage with a melee attack, you have a chance to reduce the cast time of your next Lightning Bolt, Chain Lightning, Lesser Healing Wave, Healing Wave, Chain Heal, or Lava Burst spell by 20%, and this stacks up to five times. So essentially the way that this works is you're in melee combat, right? You're fighting, um... This will naturally just stack five times to 100%, so you're basically able to then cast an instant lightning bolt, chain lightning, lava burst, heal, any of your heals. Um, it feels really good. Uh, when they added this to the game, I was playing my shaman, and it was a lot of fun. So it's really cool like, kind of being like a an enhancement melee shaman, right? And being able to like just instantly blast out some lava burst. It, it really is. It makes for some cool gameplay. And then on our belt as well, another rune, we have Power Surge. Each time Flame Shock deals damage, it has a 5% chance to reset the cooldown on Lava Burst and Chain Lightning and make the next Lava Burst Chain Heal or Chain Lightning within 10 seconds instant. So that is really nice. So every time your Flame Shock is dealing periodic damage, it has a 5% chance to reset the cooldown on Lava Burst and Chain Lightning and make the next Lava Burst Chain Heal or Chain Lightning instant cast. So this is going to be really, really nice. Um, especially for elemental shamans, this is going to be really nice. Uh, and then we have, okay, let's move on to our boot runes. We have Ancestral Awakening on our boots. When you critically heal with your healing wave or lesser healing wave, you summon an ancestral spirit to aid you, instantly healing the lowest percentage health party member within 40 yards for 30% of the amount healed. Uh, so a nice healing rune right there. For resto shamans, we have... Another rune on our boots called Decoy Totem. Summon a Decoy Totem for 10 seconds with 5 health at the foot of the cat of the target that will redirect the next melee or ranged attack made against the target to the totem instead. Uh, the totem also grants the target immunity to movement impairing effects. So basically like a uh, uh, grounding totem, but for physical damage. So that's pretty interesting. I like that. That's a, that's a nice addition. Um, another boot rune we have here is Spirit of the Alpha. Um, infuses the target with spirit of an alpha wolf, increasing all threat generated by the target by 45% for 30 minutes, limit one target. So a nice tanking buff right here. Um, I'm wondering, if, can you put this on other people? That would be interesting. I mean, I don't know why you would, because if you're not tanking, you, we would not be taking this. Um, you'd probably be taking Ancestral Awakening, to be honest. If you were healing, I mean... I mean, I guess, yeah, you know what? There's no no DPS rune on the boots, so maybe Spirit of the Alpha if you wanted to help one of your tanks out or something like that, or if you just want to use it on yourself, that's really nice as well. 
And then we have Enchant Chest Two-Handed Mastery. There it is, guys. Each time you strike an enemy with a two-handed weapon, you gain 30% attack speed with two-handed weapons for 10 seconds. That is huge. Combine that with the Enhancement Tree with Flurry, and you're going to be having a really good time. I'm so happy they're bringing two-handed two shamans. I mean, I feel like that is absolutely needed. Like, you, you really do. Like... One of the best things in Vanilla WoW is being able to play a Shaman with a two-hander, walk up to someone, get that lucky Wind Fury, and just almost one-shot somebody, right? I mean, I feel like it is really, it makes for such fun gameplay, and I'm so glad that they're bringing that to Saad. Um, I think that everyone has been waiting for this um, and been wanting it. Um, but other than that, Shamans have some pretty cool stuff here. I like Fire Nova. Um... The, the belt rune, that's going to help a lot with AoE. Maelstrom weapon is going to make playing enhancement feel really, really good in my opinion. Um, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think, but I think it is. I think it's really going to make playing enhancement feel absolutely awesome. Um, and you got a lot of good healing stuff here as well. They're already really, really good tanks. Um, so I could see why they only really added the Spirit of the Alpha and Decoy Totem for stuff like that. Um... They don't really need much more than that. I mean, I, even the threat, like, I guess they could use more threat, but I, I really think shamans are, like, super top-tier tanks right now. So, I'm not sure why they would get any more tank runes, but I guess Spirit of the Op, they might need it in Omer. We have no idea, but I know everyone is going to be super pumped to be playing around with Two-Handed Mastery. I know I am th just reading through these runes and seeing Two-Handed Mastery and Maelstrom Weapon there. The fact that you can use both of those is pretty cool, too. Um... Really, Maelstrom Weapon actually will will stack a lot faster when you're dual wielding like with melee, um, but I'm sure it could work with two-handed mastery as well. But let me know down below in the comments, guys. Let's get into some conversations. What do you think about these Shaman runes? All right, so let's take a look at some of the Rogue runes. We're going to start with the Belt runes. Uh, we have Engrave Belt Poisoned Knife. Instantly throw your offhand weapon to deal normal offhand weapon damage with a 100% chance to apply the poison from your offhand weapon to the target and awards one combo point. The poison knife benefits from all talents and effects that trigger from or modify Sinister Strike. That's actually pretty cool. So basically like a like a instant throw that generates a combo point. Let's say you have crippling poison on your offhand. Uh, you opened on someone like a mage. They blink away from you. Um, and you want to get to them, so you pop sprint to get out of that Nova, you fling a poison knife at them, it instantly applies crippling poison, and now they don't have blink, so you can catch up, so that's pretty damn cool. Uh, and then we have Engrave Belt Shadow Step. Attempts to step through the shadows and reappear behind your enemy and increase movement speed by 70% for 3 seconds. We all know and love Shadow Step, that's going to be an absolute blast to use in PvP. Uh, we have Engrave Belt Shuriken Toss. Throw a Shuriken at your enemy, dealing up equal... Dealing damage equal to 25% of your attack power and also strike up to four additional nearby targets. So basically a ranged uh, throwing cleave that generates a combo point that does 25% of your attack power. Not bad. It hits four targets. Um, I have a feeling like rogue tanks will use this to pull, right? Packs of enemies. Um, I would assume that pulling with this will be really good because uh, you're not really going to use Shadow Step and you're not really going to use Poison Knife when tanking. So Shuriken Toss, definitely a tanking ability. Gives them the ability to pull multiple mobs and, and generate threat on multiple mobs at once. That's pretty nice. Um, so moving down, we have some Boot Runes. Let's go through those. We have Master of Subtlety. Attacks made while stealth and for 6 seconds after breaking stealth cause an additional 10% damage. That's really nice. So basically when you pop out of stealth and for 6 seconds after that you're dealing 10% increased damage. That's really nice. Uh, we have Waylay is the next boot rune. Um, your ambush and backstab hits unbalance your target, increasing the time between their melee attacks by 10% and reducing movement speed by 50%. So basically open it's like... You, like, disorient someone when you open up on them. You know, you open up with Ambush. Um, and they're going to basically have 10% of their attack speed reduced and be basically crippled by 50% of their movement speed. So that's really nice as well. I do feel like Master of Subtlety will just infinitely be better than that because you're going to always... I mean, the thing with Waylay, though, that I'm reading here is that you don't need to be stealth. Uh, so backstab, even when you're just fighting someone regular, you know, you gouge, backstab them. It could be a nice kind of crippling effect. Um, I could see situations where that would be useful, but Master of Subtlety, in my opinion, is just too good to pass up. 10% increased damage from your opener to 6%, 6 seconds after you open. 
is really nice. That's a lot of damage. So uh, we'll see. We'll have to see those in action to see which one is actually better. Um, so let's move down to our helm runes. Uh, for our helm runes, we have engrave helm combat potency. Uh, and that you have a 20% chance to gain 15 energy every time you deal melee damage with your offhand weapon. Now, this is really, really nice. Uh, you're pretty sure in e almost every situation you're going to be using this um, for PvE DPS. But we got to see what the other two runes are. So let's read on those first, right? We have a, another helm rune here called Focused Attacks. You gain two energy every time you deal a melee or ranged critical strike. Eh, I don't know how I feel about that one. Like, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about that. But I think when looking at Focused Attacks, Combat Potency is just infinitely better. Um, so I would not I would not opt for Focused Attacks over Combat Potency pretty much ever. Um, and then let's keep going down here. We have Engrave Helm Honor Among Thieves. When any player in your party critically hits with a spell or ability, you gain a combo point on your current target. This effect cannot occur more than once every second. Now, this sounds crazy when you really think about it, but you got to remember that it's a spell or ability, right? So that, that doesn't mean like white hits, right? So if you have a warrior in your group critting out of control, a lot of that is going to be white hits and stuff like that. So that will not be generating you combo points. You got to remember its abilities. Now, if that warrior is critting with heroic strike or quick strike, that would generate you a combo point. So this could scale pretty crazy. It depends, you know, how, however, I feel like this is going to just get better as the phases go on, right? As, as more classes gain crit. But I do think that you're posed with a choice here. And I think it's going to be between honor among thieves and combat potency. Um, really gonna have to see which one increases your DPS more. I mean, if you're in a pretty stacked group where everyone is critting constantly, you're just gonna always have full combo points, which is pretty crazy. Um, so yeah, I'd really have to see that in action because combat potency is really good as well. I mean, 20% chance for to gain 15 energy every single time that you hit something with your offhand is pretty huge. Um, so that's gonna be pretty hard to beat, but Honor Among Thieves could compete with that. So I'd like to see those both in play to kind of to kind of see you know, which one is going to be better. I won't really know, so I don't want to give you guys, like, the wrong information there. They both look pretty good. I mean, as far as all of these runes for Rogue look really good, I love Poison Knife. It, it seems really cool. So you'd have to kind of choose between Poison Knife and Shadow Step when it comes to, like, Rogue PvPing. Um, I do think that Poison Knife might be better um, in open world PvP, and Shadow Step would be better in terms of, like, Battleground-style PvP. Um, and then you obviously have Shuriken Toss for a little bit of a cleave um, and also to help out your rogue tanks. Um, I'm assuming that for DPS in raid, like PvE DPS, you're going to take Shuriken Toss too because Shadow Step will be pretty useless there and Poison Knife won't really be used there either. So I think Shuriken Toss would even be used there for extra cleave damage, um, even as a DPS rogue. So keep that in mind. But yeah, as far as uh, looking at this here, rogues have gotten some pretty good love. I might honestly be switching to maining my rogue after seeing the warrior runes. I wasn't too happy with the warrior runes. The, some of them are pretty good, uh, but the rogue runes really grabbed me, and I think it's it's going to make for a really fun play style. Uh, so let me know what you guys think about that down in the comments below. All right, guys, so let's dive into the priest runes. We have our belt runes up first. And for our first belt rune, we have engraved belt empowered renew. Your renew now heals one extra um, one extra time immediately when applied and gains 15% increased benefit each time it heals from your bonus healing effects. That's a pretty humongous buff to renew. Uh, priests, priests were already really strong healers going into this, so I can only imagine after seeing these runes what they're going to be like in terms of healing. But I'm pretty sure we do have some really cool uh, shadow stuff in here as well. So let's keep reading. Uh, so the next belt rune we have up for grabs here is Mind Spike. Uh, Mind Spike blasts the target for X amount of damage. It's going to be Shadow Frost damage, and it increases the critical strike chance of your next Mind Blast on the target by 30%, stacking up to three times. Uh, so the way this is going to work, basically, is Mind Spike is going to be spammed, and then you will get your basically almost instant Mind Blast crit, because uh, you can get it up to 90% chance to crit with Mind Blast. So you'll dump a Mind Blast out and then go back to Mind Spike, which is really cool. Uh, seeing Priest get Mind Spike was, is a really good thing because you know what? It was really needed. DPS Priests were really, really lacking in Phase 1. So I'm glad that they've gotten Mind Spike now. Um, I think it is really going to help them out quite a bit. 
And then our next belt rune we have up here is Renewed Hope. Your heals from Flash Heal, Lesser Heal, Heal, Greater Heal, and Penance have a 10% increased critical effect chance when cast on targets with Weakened Soul. Um, so Weakened Soul is basically a debuff that you get when a priest has put a shield on you. So priest throws a shield on someone and now they can get healed um, with any of the priest's heals and it will have a 10% increased uh, critical effect chance um, when that target is still affected by weakened soul. So that is really nice for priest healing. Um, and then moving on down to our boot runes, we have Dispersion. Most of you already know what this is. Any of you priest lovers, Dispersion is insane uh, for damage mitigation, but here I'll read it for you guys. You disperse into pure shadow energy, reducing all damage taken by 90%. You are unable to attack or cast spells, but you regenerate 6% mana every one second for six seconds. Dispersion can be cast while stunned, feared, or silenced, and clears all snare and movement impairing effects when cast and makes you immune to them while dispersed. So basically, when a priest pops Dispersion, um, they, ba they basically become invincible. Um, they take pretty much no damage whatsoever. They can't be snared. They can't be rooted. Uh, it is actually crazy, especially in PvP. Uh, Shadow Priests at level 25 were already monsters at PvP. Um, but after seeing just the first few of these runes, they are going to be insane in PvP at level 40, that is for sure. So then we have another uh, Boots rune here. Pain Suppression. Instantly reduce all damage taken by a friendly target by 40% and increases resistance to dispel mechanics by 65% for 8 seconds. So another super defensive uh, ability here for priest pain suppression it seems like priests are going to be really really tough to uh tough to fight and, and you'd have to choose between dispersion and pain suppression i'm not sure which one would be better i guess it's going to be pretty situational i'm not a priest main but anyone who does play priest comment down below let me know which one you like better which one you would run in pvp and pve um and then we have rolling with the punches another boots rune each time you dodge or parry you gain 6% increased health, stacking up to 5 times. So this can stack up to a total of 30% increased health uh, for, from dodging and parrying. This is an interesting one, rolling with the punches. I'm not really sure um, like what, what would be the purpose of this rune. Maybe I just don't know Priest that well. Um, it's a weird one, but uh, yeah, that, that, that definitely is... That's a weird one for me. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, we have another Boots rune here, Spirit of the Redeemer. Activate to become the Spirit of Redemption for 30 seconds. While in this form, you can cast any healing spell free of cost, but you cannot move. You cannot attack, you cannot be attacked, or be targeted by any spells or effects. Require Spirit of Redemption talent to activate and you will no longer enter Spirit of Redemption upon dying. Okay, so activate to become a Spirit of Redemption for 30 seconds. So basically, this is letting you use Spirit of Redemption while you're still alive, uh, which is pretty cool. You can't move, you can't be attacked, um, but and, and you're in this form, you can cast any healing spells free of cost, but you cannot move, attack, be attacked, or targeted by any spells. So yeah, basically it's allowing you to use Spirit of Redemption while you're still alive. That's actually pretty cool. That's a, that's an interesting uh, rune that will definitely be used uh, for, for healing priests for sure. Um, and then moving on down to Bracer runes, we have... Uh, bracers. Engrave Bracers. Despair. Periodic damage from your spells can now be critical strikes. So there you go. Your Void Plague, your Shadow Word Pain, it can crit now, which is insane. The priests are going to be actually off the charts um, in, in Phase 2. They look like they're going to be a lot of fun to play. They look like their damage has been increased by so much. Um, they were already really strong in PvP, and now they're going to be even stronger. So this is pretty exciting. Um, for someone who's never even, I've literally never gotten a priest past level 20. It's just the class has never interested me. Warlock was always my favorite caster. Um, but looking at these runes, I honestly might consider rolling a priest alt because it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun, really. Um, and then we have Engrave Bracer's Surge of Light. Uh, critical spell casts cause your next smite, flash heal, or binding heal cast within 15 seconds to be instant cast. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then we have in, uh, in, Engrave Bracer's Void Zone. Summon a Void Zone in a target area that deals X amount of shadow damage to enemies that stand within it every second for 10 seconds. Uh, so that is really interesting. You combine Void Zone with Mind Seer um, and 
Priests are going to be doing a good amount of AoE damage now, too. That I like that. Um, and then we have a Helm Rune here. We have Divine Aegis. So this is going to be a Helm Rune. Critical heals create a protective shield on the target, absorbing 30% of the amount healed, which is really, really nice. I like that. So let's say you, you crit heal someone for 900. They're then going to have um, a shield on them for around 300. And that's going to be pretty cool because it just amps up priest healing even more. I'm, I mean, it was already super strong. Um, but yeah, that's, that's interesting. I think that's going to be pretty crazy. And then we have Engraved Pants Shadow Fiend. Um, creates a shadowy fiend to attack the target. Um, caster receives 5% mana when the shadow fiend attacks. So this will definitely be helping with priest, um, mana issues and increase their DPS by even a little bit more. So I think priests are going to be in a really good spot moving forward into P2. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think, but I think they did, uh, Blizzard did a really good job with the priest runes, judging by this. All right, guys, so let's take a look at some of the Paladin runes. We're gonna start off with the Belt runes. We have Engrave Belt Enlightened Judgments. Increase the range on your judgment by 30 yards and your spell hit with all spells by 17%. Wow, that's actually pretty crazy. We have Engrave Belt Infusion of Light. Increases the damage done by your Holy Shock by 20% and your damage and critical strikes with Holy Shock, reset the cooldown on Holy Shock and Exorcism and refund the cost of Holy Shock. So we're getting some sort of like Shockadin vibes here. Uh, I really do like that. Um, we have Sheath of Light, this one we saw yesterday. This is another Belt Rune. Dealing damage with your melee weapon increases your spell power by an amount equal to 30% of your attack power for one minute. In addition, your critical healing spells heal the target for 60% of the amount healed over 12 seconds. Um, so basically, Sheath of Light is going to uh, make it so that dealing damage with your weapon increases your spell power, um, and then you're, you can, I mean, it seems like they're trying to make it so like Holy Paladins are going to be like DPSing kind of is the vibes that I'm getting from this, but I guess we'll, we'll see. Um, they're definitely going to be really nice in PvP, I will say that, um, but this like spell hit with all spells by 17% on Enlightened Judgments, that's, that's kind of throwing me for a loop, but... Let me know what you guys think about that down in the comments below. Uh, but moving on to the boot runes, we have engraved boots guarded by the light. Each time you hit a target with your melee weapon, you gain 5% of your maximum mana per 3 seconds for 15 seconds. But the amount healed by your flash of light, holy light, and holy shock spells is reduced by 50% during this mana regeneration. So guarded by the light is basically a mana regen, uh, but you have to melee. You have to actually get in melee range in melee. Um, but... Nonetheless, pretty nice for mana regen. We have Engraved Boots Sacred Shield. We all know and love Sacred Shield. Uh, each time the target takes damage, they gain a Sacred Shield, absorbing 500 damage and increasing the Paladin's chance to critically hit with Flash of Light by 50% for up to 6 seconds. In addition, causes your Flash of Light to heal targets with Sacred Shield for an additional 100% over 12 seconds. Cannot, uh, this effect cannot occur more than once every 6 seconds, last 30 seconds. This spell cannot be on more than one target at a time. So we all know and love Sacred Shield. It seems like they're making Holy Paladins really strong uh, with these runes. So you love to see it. They really have been lacking a little bit so far in Phase 1. So it's good to see them getting some love in Phase 2. And then we have Engraved Boots, the Art of War. Your melee critical strikes reset the cooldowns on Holy Shock and Exorcism. There it is. That's going to be huge for Paladin DPS. Art of War really does change the way playing DPS Paladin feels, so I'm really happy to see that I might actually finish my Paladin now because I love the way some of these runes are looking. Um, and let's move on to the Bracer runes. We have Engraved Bracer's Improved Hammer of Wrath. The cooldown on Hammer of Wrath is reset each time it damages an enemy below 10%. So basically, if I'm understanding this right, what that means is when uh, you, the enemy is at 10% or less, right, you're going to basically be able to sit there and spam Hammer of Wrath, right? The cooldown on Hammer of Wrath is reset each time it damages an enemy below 10%. So boss hits 10% and you can now basically spam Hammer of Wrath <laughs> with, with no cooldown until the boss is dead, which is pretty insane. So Paladins have a pretty nice execute phase now. Um, and I'm really, really curious to see, uh, how, how this is going to be. Um, that's actually nuts. Am I reading that right? I am, right? The cooldown on Hammer of Wrath is reset, right? So the cooldown is reset each time you damage an enemy below 10% health. Yeah, it's simple. 
So they just gave Paladins like a massive, massive execute, right? Like if that boss is at 10% health or lower and it takes you 20, 30 seconds to kill that boss, you have now, like 30 seconds would mean you casted, what is it, a three second cast? Like you have now casted 10 Hammer of Rats. That is crazy. I, I actually cannot wait to see that in action. That's, that's mind blowing right there. Uh, we have Engrave Bracers Purifying Power. Reduces the cooldown on Exorcism and Holy Wrath by 50%, and Holy Wrath can now be cast at any target and will stun undead and demon targets for two seconds. So that's really cool. That's going to be a... I mean, I don't know why you would take that over the Improved Hammer. I mean, for Trash, Purifying Power is going to be massive. Basically making Holy Wrath a another AoE, right? That that's basically what's happening here. Um... It can be cast on any target, so yeah, you can use it for just AoEing, reduces the cooldown by 50%, and it will still stun undead and demons. So yeah, maybe for clearing trash, purifying power, and then bosses, you're going to use Hammer of Wrath. Um, we have purifying power here again. I think that's just a mistake. Oh, here we go. We have some helm uh, runes here. We have engrave helm fanati fanaticism. Fan fanaticism. Fanaticism. That's what it is, right? Fanaticism. Increase your critical strike chance with holy spells by 18%. Holy, dude. Just a fl just 18%. That's insane. Engrave Helm Improved Sanctuary. Uh, what does this do? It increases the damage prevented by your Blessing of Sanctuary by 100%. And increases damage done by your Blessing of Sanctuary by 30% of your shield block value. Nice tanking rune right there. We have... Engrave Helm Light's Grace. Your next Holy Light, your Holy Light spell reduces the cast time of your next Holy Light spell by 0 0.5 seconds, last 15 seconds. Um, so casting Holy Light reduces the cast time on your next Holy Light by 0.5. We have Engrave Helm Wrath. Your Consecration Damage can now be Critical Strikes and damage from your Exorcism, Holy Shock, Holy Wrath, and Consecration Spells gains additional Critical Strike Chance equal to your Melee Critical Strike Chance. Holy, dude. Paladins are going to be AoE machines. Between um, the Helm Rune, Wrath, right? And what was the other one we were just looking at? And... Purifying power on your bracers, so you now can use Holy Wrath on everything. Your Consecrate is critting, based off of your melee crit. We have Art of War on our boots, which is insane. Your melee crits reset the cooldown on Holy Shock and Exorcism. Paladin's got some really nice runes. I'm actually... I'm really going to finish my Paladin now. This is uh, pretty cool. They got some really, really cool stuff. This Execute phase with Hammer of Wrath is going to be just completely nutty. Um, it's going to be nuts. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think about these runes down in the comments below. I think Paladin's got a lot of love here, and uh, you love to see it. All right, so let's take a look at some of these mage runes. Mages look like they got quite a lot of stuff, so let's dive into it. We have a belt. We're going to start off with the belt runes, right? And we have Engrave Belt, Frostfire Bolt. We all know and love Frostfire Bolt. Launches a bolt of Frostfire at the enemy, causing X amount of Frostfire damage. Slowing movement speed by 40% and causing an additional X amount of Frostfire damage over 9 seconds. This spell will be checked against the lower of the target's frost and fire resistances. Counts as both frost and fire damage. Frostfire Bolt is just so iconic for mages. I feel like it's one of those abilities that everyone just loves. Like, uh, it's going to be so awesome seeing Frostfire Bolt in Season of Discovery, in my opinion. Uh, like, in the vanilla universe. Um, so for the next belt rune, we have Hot Shriek. Yes, we got Hot Shriek. Anytime you score two non-periodic spell criticals in a row using Fireball, Fire Blast, Scorch, or Living Bomb, your next Pyroblast spell cast within 10 seconds will be instant cast. Um, okay, I got something to say about this, but let's finish these belt runes and then we'll talk about them real quick before we move on to the others. So another belt rune we have here, Missile Barrage. Gives your Arcane Blast a 40% chance and your Fireball and Frostbolt spells a 20% chance to reduce the channel duration of your next Arcane Missile spell by 50%. Reduce the mana cost by 100% and missiles will fire every 0.5 seconds. Ar uh, Missile Barrage is actually awesome for Arcane Mage. It feels really, really good to use. It basically turns your Arcane Missiles into a no mana cost, um, just like rapid fire version of arcane missiles it's, it's actually really fun to play with so i'm glad to see that here as well um and then we have another belt rune here we have four spell frost bolt launches a bolt of spell frost at the enemy 
causing X amount of spell frost damage and slowing movement speed by 40% for 9 seconds. This spell will be checked against, checked against the lower of the target's frost and arcane resistance and counts as both frost and arcane damage. So spell frost bolt is basically the same thing as frost fire bolt, only it is um, frost and arcane damage rather than frost and fire damage. So that is really, really nice as well. And again, that can be used towards mage healing, I'm assuming, since it is arcane as well. Um, and now let's move on down to the boot runes here. Oh my god, we have brain freeze, dude. Wow, mages got some crazy runes. This is actually nutty to see. In uh, engraved boots, brain freeze. Your frost damage spells with chilling effects have a 15% chance to cause your next fireball, spell frost, fire fo fr frost fireball. This is like a, a tongue twister here. Cause your next fireball, spell frost bolt, or frost fire bolt spell to be instant cast and no cost no mana so basically um any of your frost damaging spells have this 15 percent chance to basically proc free instant cast fireballs spell frost bolts and frost fireballs which is really really sick and it makes for some really fluid and fun gameplay um and then we have another boot rune here we have chronostatic preservation this looks like another healing rune here so heals a friendly target for x amount Fuses arcane fire and frost magic to freeze chronomantic energy into a stored state for later use. You can hold this energy for up to 15 seconds before it combusts and expires. When unleashed, heals a friendly target for X amount. The spell is considered arcane fire and frost for interactions with other spells, talents, and abilities. So a really big heal right here for mages. That's really nice as well. And then moving to our bracers, we have Bale Fire Bolt. Unleash a reality-distorting burst of raw magic at your enemy, dealing X amount of Spellfire damage. Each time you cast Balefire Bolt, the damage of your next Balefire Bolt within 30 seconds will be increased by 10%, and your spirit will be decreased by 10% for 30 seconds. Bolts stacking up to 10 times, so it can get up to 100% increased damage, 100% decreased spirit. If your spirit reaches zero as consequence, you will immediately die. This spell will be checked against the lower of the target's arcane and fire <laughs> resistances. If your spirit reaches zero as consequence, you will immediately die. That's actually crazy. That's that's pretty funny. So it's kind of like a dark spell for mages. I kind of like that. Um, and then we have Engrave Bracer's Displacement. Teleports back to where you last cast Blink from and resets the cooldown of Blink, only usable within 10 seconds of casting Blink. Displacement's really nice, especially in PvP. Uh, trying to like juke people you can pretty much blink and then like nine seconds later which would be almost the max you can displace back to right where you started before you blinked so it's pretty cool um and then bracers again we have molten armor um causes x amount of fire damage when hit increases your spell critical strike chance by five percent and reduces the chance you are critically hit by five percent only one type of armor spell can be active on the mage at any time so this is a really nice armor, uh, like a DPS armor, which mages are really lacking in vanilla or classic um, era. So it's going to be nice to see molten armor there. And then we have our helm runes right here. We have deep freeze. We got to take a second to realize what I'm reading here. So mages are going to have deep freeze in classic. Okay, that's pretty crazy. Stuns the target for five seconds. Only usable on frozen targets deals X amount of damage to permanent to targets that are permanently immune to stun. So mages basically just got a five second stun. For those of you who don't know, Deep Freeze is ridiculous. It's a ridiculous spell. It's extremely strong. And I'm actually might want to play a mage now after reading this, to be honest. That is gonna like dude, mages in PvP are gonna be like unkillable with these runes. Um and as for our next rune, we have Enchant Engrave Helm Temporal Anomaly. Launches an orb of temporal energy, which slowly moves forward and every two seconds grants all nearby party members a shield. Ooh, so like a healing arcane orb or frozen orb. That is actually really cool. So basically, it's like an arcane orb or a frozen orb for anyone who's played uh, when those are in later versions of the game. You throw it out, and if it passes through like your party or your raid, it puts a shield on them. So that is really, really cool. I like to, I like to see that. That was actually pretty interesting, and that's going to make healing a lot more interesting too. Um, and then we have Engrave Boots Spell Power. Increase critical strike damage bonus of all spells by 50%. Is 
is that just a, just straight up a boots rune? 50% critical strike damage bonus? What <laughs> that is nuts. Are they I feel like this is like April Fools, like they're trolling us with these mage runes. Like by far, out of all the runes that I've read so far, mages have the best kit going into phase two. Like by a long shot. Mages have crazy, crazy stuff. Um and this is actually one... I love Mage, but it's the one class I haven't played yet in Season of Discovery. That and Priest. Uh, so I might be making a Mage tomorrow, guys. I think that's what we're doing. But uh, yeah, let me know down in the comments below what you guys think about these Mage runes. Alright, so going over the Hunter runes, let's start with the Belt runes. We have Engrave Belt Aspect of the Viper. The Hunter takes on the Aspect of the Viper, causing your ranged and melee auto attacks to regenerate mana, but reducing your total damage done by 10%. In addition, you gain 10% of maximum mana every 3 seconds. Mana gained is based on the speed of your weapon. Only one Aspect can be active at a time. So Aspect of the Viper is going to be really nice for Hunter uh, mana management, um, but the thing is, remember, you can only have one Aspect um, going at a time, right? So this would mean you can't use like Aspect of the Hawk. Now, Aspect of the Lion, you can use with Aspect of the Viper because it was changed to, like, an aura. It's not necessarily an Aspect. Um, but, yeah, let's read these other ones and see if Aspect of the Viper will really be used that much. So, we have Engrave Belt, Expose Weakness. Um, your melee and ranged criticals increase your attack power by 40% of your current agility for 7 seconds. So that's going to be a nice one for DPS. That's a straight up DPS rune. And then we have Melee Specialist. We saw this one in the preview that they launched last night. Raptor Strike cooldown reduced to 3 seconds and is now instant. Mongoose Bite cooldown removed and Raptor Strike has a 30% chance on each attack not to trigger its cooldown. So another melee hunter rune here, obviously, melee specialist. So that's going to make it feel really nice using Raptor Strike. Um, and then the Mongoose Bite cooldown being removed is also really nice. And then Raptor Strike has a 30% chance on each attack to not trigger its cooldown, meaning like you may get lucky and be able to spam it like three times in a row, uh, which could really feel pretty nice. And then we have a fourth belt rune here for hunters, uh, belt uh, engraved belt steady shot. A steady shot that causes 60% range weapon damage. So this is going to basically be like a filler shot. Steady shot's always been like a filler shot. So uh, I guess we're going to have to wait and see how that's going to be. But I I'm assuming that exposed weakness is going to out DPS steady shot. But again, I'm not a hunter main. I'm not really sure how that's going to work, but interesting nonetheless. So moving on to our boot runes, we have engraved boots dual wield specialization. Sorry, I need to catch my breath there. I'm talking so much here. Uh, it increases the damage done by your offhand weapon by 50%, causes your Raptor Strike to strike with both weapons when you are dual wielding, and Raptor Strike deals 30% increased damage when you are wielding two weapons of the same type, meaning like two axes, two swords, two daggers. Um, so that's really interesting. So you combine dual wield specialization with melee specialist, and you're starting to look at a pretty good melee hunter now. So uh, that that's really cool. I, I like to see that. Um, and then moving down, we have Engrave Boots Invigoration. When your pet scores a critical hit with a special ability, you instantly regenerate 5% of your maximum mana. Eh, that's okay. And then clearly this is going to be the winner here, uh, Engrave Boots Trap Launcher. Your traps can now be placed at any location within 40 yards and can be placed while you are in combat. Additionally, your fire-based and frost-based traps now have separate shared cooldowns. Um, so you can use fire and frost traps together, and you can shoot them 40 up to 40 yards away. You basically can place them wherever you want, and they can be used in combat. So I'm assuming this is going to be our go-to for ranged DPS hunters. Uh, obviously, if you're going melee, you're going to want to take that dual wield specialization rune. But uh, for our ranged DPS hunters, I can't really see a situation where we're going to where we're going to want to use invigoration because um, trap launcher is just it's just way too good. Uh, so let's move on down to our bracer runes. We have Engrave Bracers Focus Fire. Consume all applications of Frenzy from your pet, increasing your ranged attack speed by 3% and granting 4 focus to your pet for each application of Frenzy that was consumed. Your pet gains Frenzy each time it uses a basic attack, increasing its melee attack speed by 6% for 10 seconds and stacking up to 5 times. So basically, the way this is going to work is... Your pet is gaining frenzy by attacking, right? And then you can pretty much consume that frenzy um, and increase your own attack speed. But then again, while you have this rune on, your pet is gaining frenzy every single time that it uses a basic attack. 
and this lasts 20 seconds. So if you do the math, you could pretty much keep this up almost all the time. It doesn't say, um, like, there's no, like, cooldown, or you can only use this once every minute, or anything weird like that. Like, so I'm assuming this is going to be something you're going to want to maintain up on yourself is Focus Fire. Uh, so that is really interesting. That's a humongous DPS increase for Hunters right there. And then moving down, we have Engrave Bracer's TNT. Uh, increases damage done by Explosive Shot and all your damaging traps by 10%. So basically making all your fire spells like Explosive Shot and all your fire traps uh, do 10% more damage. Again, though, I think Focus Fire is going to be stronger than that. I really can't see a situation where that is going to outscale Focus Fire. Maybe for clearing trash and things like that. You could swap to Explosive Shot and be dropping a bunch of fire traps everywhere. Um, and then on bosses, switch back to Focus Fire. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about that. But that is all the Hunter runes that we have seen here. But some pretty good stuff. I, I would say my favorites are going to be Exposed Weakness, Melee Specialist, and Dual Wield Specialization. This is going to be just an awesome combination. Um... Yeah, Melee Specialist and Dual Wield Specialization. It seems like they're going to make Melee Hunter uh, pretty strong. Like, I think it's going to be really strong judging by these two runes. I'm not sure if there are going to be any more coming out. Um, but, you know, this is this is a good amount of runes. They got some pretty cool stuff. Trap Launcher is just... It makes playing Hunter feel so much more fluid. Uh, it just feels better. Not being able to place your traps in combat has always felt like super clunky. For hunters right so i think that uh giving them trap launcher was just such a such a nice thing and uh the, the tnt rune not sure how that's going to fit in but i'm sure there's going to be some situations where it works like i said maybe for clearing trash or like speed runs you want to do a lot of a ton of aoe damage with your traps and explosive shot um tnt would definitely come into play over focus fire focus fire is going to be more for like single target boss fights and things like that um so i guess we're gonna have to wait and see but yeah this, i think that they got some good love here with the phase two runes. Um, I want to know what you guys think. So drop some comments down below. Let's get into some conversations. All right, guys. So lots of good stuff there. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit that like button. It really does help me out a lot. I'm going to be putting out a video for every single class for phase two, going over their new runes and any changes that these classes are getting. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, hit that subscribe button, turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next time I post a video. And if you want to hang out with me live, I do stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash hammerdance. I'll drop a link to that in the description below this video. And if you want to join an awesome community discord full of like-minded people who all enjoy geeking out over classic WoW and season of discovery, we will welcome you with open arms. I'll drop a link to the discord in the description as well. Well, but anyways, guys, thank you all so much for watching and listening in. I'll see you all in the next one.